This is a climate damn emergency. Climate change is the great moral challenge of our generation. How dare you pretend that this can be sold with just business as usual and some technical solutions? The word urgent is, is totally applicable to the current crisis that we're in because countries are simply not getting the job done. You interfere with Mother Nature, this is what you get. Climate change is now much more dangerous than we had predicted five to ten years ago. Science is there, you know, you got to believe the facts and you got to do something, something to help us. Australia is on the front line of climate change. We're already experiencing climate change related natural disasters on a hot, dry continent with some communities experiencing rising sea levels. But you see Australians of all kinds are rising to meet the existential threat of our times. This whole island, Masig, is our library. It has knowledge, it has history, it has ancestral connection which ties us back to this land. Masig is our maternity ward. This Masig is our hospital. This island is our supermarket. It provides us with our food, it feeds us, it gives us shelter. For these Torres Strait Islanders, time is running out. Rising sea levels, more extreme weather and coastal erosion are consuming some of the 17 inhabited islands where indigenous people have lived for thousands of years. The weather never used to be like this. So you see, uh, probably in the last 10 years, I've seen about 20 metres of land being washed away. Weather patterns lately has been um, quite abnormal. With the king tides that's been coming into our community, we I haven't seen anything like that before. The water come into the community and I was thinking of the future generations, how we go survive. Scientific modelling suggests the sea level here could rise by 80 centimetres by the end of this century. That would mean the kinds of devastating weather events that normally occur once every 100 years could hit low-lying islands like Boigu every few days. At this point, we're not going to eliminate catastrophic climate change impacts entirely. Some of them we're already dealing with, but we can prevent the worst impacts uh, from playing out if we act boldly within the next decade. If we fail to do that, then we will start to see those um, worst case scenarios play out, and that means substantial flooding of uh, low-lying islands and coastal regions of Australia. Boigu Island priest Stanley Marama is one of eight Torres Strait Islanders who accuse the Australian government of failing to address the climate impacts that threaten their homes. They've taken their case all the way to the UN Human Rights Committee in Geneva. Government should help us right now, not tomorrow, not next year. Because of the impacts and the effects of climate change, we believe that our, our human rights are being violated. Our clients' islands are between around 3 and 10 metres above sea level, so they're particularly vulnerable to the impacts of sea level rise. <laughs> hey, I'm in the camera. Look for Peter. Boigo Island is uh, the island I love. We live here and we die here. Our grandfathers and fathers die here, mothers, grandmothers. Uh, this is our home. I 
And this is our cemetery. End part of the island, western point, and the lowest part. And we worry about the loved ones. It's scary yeah, when water rises. Climate change is happening now. It's happening now. How much the world warms in coming decades could determine whether the cultural traditions of the Torres Strait survive. The average global temperature has already increased 1.1 degrees above pre-industrial levels. It's set to exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius in the next 20 years, if we continue on the current path. Australia has already experienced a year of 1.5 degrees, which was in 2019 when we experienced the black summer bushfires and mass bleaching on the Great Barrier Reef. So we have a taste of what is to come. And the imperative for us is to now say, the temperature is rising, it's ex rising extremely quickly and we're seeing the consequences all around us. Around Australia, scientists point to 17 different ecosystems which they say are in danger of collapse, with climate change posing the greatest single threat to vulnerable species and habitats. In the east of the Torres Strait, Yesse Mosby says climate change has made his island home an increasingly desolate place. The reef outside, it looks like a desert, it's full of sand. You go to the area where you know where you'll pick up abundance of shellfish and stuff like that. You have to go further. It's all covered in sand. Our ancestors survived off drinking fresh water along the wells. They dug out through this island. Now most of the wells are near the shorelines now. They used to be inland. This water here is it's not drinkable. Wash up to the church well. It was down the road, but it was all along there and all along here. I thought we were going to lose this coconut tree. Massig resident Hilda Mosby hopes that building higher seawalls will protect the island, at least in the short term. As they wait for construction to start, there are days when locals here struggle to keep the rising sea from inundating the community. It is nerve-wracking. You go to sleep, but you don't sleep. Will you be here tomorrow? So we're doing everything we can to stay where we are. Unfortunately, the science tells us that in the coming decades, some of these island communities will become uninhabitable and have to be relocated. Planning for that needs to really begin now. It's going to be so traumatising. It's really scary to think about that. We're Australians, and if this happens, you know, we'll be climate change refugees in our own country. How can that be possible? Torres Strait Islanders like Kebe Tamu have asked Prime Minister Scott Morrison to come and see the impacts for himself. It's pretty hard to see weather pattern change in Canberra, you know. In a statement, the Minister for Indigenous Australians, Ken Wyatt, said the Morrison government is aware of the risks and is helping Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities build their resilience and prepare for the impacts of climate change. We need to have a clear reality check around what's coming. Areas like the Torres Strait will be further impacted. There's sort of no way around that now but we can help those communities prepare as best as possible. We have so much work to do and every single day that we aren't making, we aren't moving in the right direction. It's just gonna make the problems and the challenges that much harder down the road. What we, humanity, together do over the next four to five years may well determine the future of humanity for the next few thousand years. Our home is being attacked by climate change. Everybody must be aware. It's an emergency. 
I want my children, my grandchildren to live here and to experience the life that we experienced growing up. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.